Hello, football family. Welcome into Huddle It Up Films. Quick story about today. I opened up my cell phone. I was like, man, I need a draft show. So I decided to call Ravens first pick, Ravens legend, uh, first ballot Hall of Famer, Jonathan Ogden, texting him, asked him to go to the do the draft show with me, and I got a quick yes. And, man, I got the wrong J.O., bro. It was James Ogden here with me. <laughs> James, how are you doing? Big day for you. Big week coming up. Ten days before the draft. Pardon my humor, sir. How are you? I'm good. No, there's no problem at all. I definitely love it because I, for a while, when I first started supporting the Ravens, which was back in the in late nine, late nineties, uh, I got to have my name on on my jersey. You know, it was great for a while. So, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> so, hey, we have something in common. Uh, last name Smith, uh, first initial J. So uh, <laughs> when Jimmy was here and we had Tori and Jimmy, had the old, like, not just the last name, but the initial on there. So I was feeling I was feeling good. I got myself a little 22 over here. So, uh, okay. it, and that was my high school number, 22. So mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a great fit. Um, but, James, first off, draft guide released. It's going to be in the description of these of this video. I might put it in the comments too, but you work really hard on this. Um, I'm really happy to have people that I can talk to draft with who study these prospects like I do. Um, tell us about the draft guide uh, just real quickly. And, uh, you know, you just put that, that out today. I imagine it's such a relief. And then for me, when I get finished with it, it's kind of like a, what am I going to do with myself? Kind of depressing feeling. It's like you, you work so hard on the Ravens from the time training camp comes and then this time comes and it's just like such a letdown. You don't know what to do with yourself for the summer. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, yeah, it's great. And thanks for having me on, Jason. I, I love love talking talking prospects with you and talking football with you. Um, so the, the respect and feeling is mutual. Um, my, yeah, the guy dropped today. Uh, it's the second year I've done it. Uh, I didn't, I had a year off doing it last year. Um, just one of the main reasons to just tr try and hone my process, process a little bit more um, and get it, get it down a bit um sort of get to the point where i was happy with the grading specifically um because i think the rankings i put out two years ago were a bit funky because of the way i was grading uh, and actually this first year i've done it with a lot more fidelity this year and it's still come out a little bit funky so we're gonna have to spend some time on that i think over the off season but um yeah you can visit the guide um on my website or um, as you mentioned, you can drop a link in the in the in the um, description of the video. Like it's just a, a, a well, it's it's. I think it came out at least nearly seventy thousand words in the end. I do full evaluation on all of these prospects. Um, I try and get you sort of set up for most of day one and day two um, from a Ravens perspective because I think one of the things that's missing in national coverage, um, like there's some great national analysts out there, but they have to try and um, evaluate these players from a um, from a really generic standpoint and as everybody that sort of does this knows as you know because of your raven centric board which i always love when that comes out every year um like the the you're only going to understand these the value of these prospects when you when you understand the fit with the scheme and the fit with the organization that they're going to and that's where they're going to be where they where their range of outcomes is going to change from from one end of the spectrum to the other based on on where they go in the league so it's a it's a luxury for us to be able to to sort of evaluate with the ravens in in mind um, and do our best to sort of talk about how these players are going to fit with the ravens how that's going to work and that and how that means they'll maximize or potentially minimize their talent it, it's just so important uh, just to echo with the, what you said there players get stuck in bad situations and you're never really able to evaluate them whether it's a receiver with a bad quarterback or, or even quarterbacks that go to uh you know messy situations and organizations where they never get the protection they never get the help and you really can't see what they're able to do so i mean it's hard to evaluate yourself to self-evaluate sometimes like isaiah simmons i still think he he was a great ball player, great prospect. He went to Arizona. When I saw him, they had they really weren't using him to his potential. So, um, you know, situations like that and the team fit is so important. So, again, this is why um, it's important to, for me, you know, I would suggest to check out James' stuff uh, because, like me, it's Raven-centric. It's Raven's fit. There are guys, uh, maybe some guys that we'll talk about today uh, who fit really well. Um, I think the epitome of this in this draft, James, one of the guys you mentioned that you wanted to talk about is Cooper DeGene, the cornerback slash safety out of Iowa. 
when I look at his game, first of all, I just love him as a player. So, you know, no matter what team I was drafting for or making a board for, he'd be up there in that first round type of range just because of his ball skills, his, his instincts. Uh, you know, there are things about him that would play in any team. But it's the positional versatility for me. The Ravens with Cooper DeGene seem like a perfect fit. You talk about how do you see it the same way, I, I would guess, and talk about your write up on him. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he was one of the earliest guys I did. And um, our sort of mutual friend, Chris Aguilera, was a guy who sort of put me onto him. Well, I know he's a sort of um, well known prospect anyway, but Chris sort of talked him up um, quite early uh, in the process. And so I sort of did him quite early on. And Cooper DeGene, you know, I think you're right. So I I I, I give out um, sort of fits um, for the Ravens on in the guide and sort of a I, I do a, a rating against um, the things that I think they look at. Um, so athleticism, intelligence, versatility, grit, and scheme. I think they also look for growth, by the way. But I'm not. Um, I never have enough film to be able to um, to sort of chart growth across time. So I, I, I can't really do that. But those five factors I gave. You know, I scored them out of five. I gave DeGene a five in all five factors. Um, and I, I think he is a he's an outstanding fit for the Ravens. I think, you know, if you go through his th go through his game, you know, he's a guy who in press is gonna he's gonna match angles with his footwork against any type of receiver. Um he really one of the things that he plays with such intelligence in the game uh, with the game. He, you know, he's he understands what a receiver's plan is at the line of scrimmage and he knows what he's trying to do with his with the release. And then he's he's able to combat it with his own plan. He's so patient and sort of trusts his athleticism um at the line of scrimmage. Um it's really difficult to to take advantage of of him as a receiver, you're going to have to have an excellent plan yourself. You're going to have to have physicality. You're going to have to have the the technique to be able to get pa to get past him. Um, so he's a, a real tough, really tough guy to go against um, in press. Um, I'd like to see him get his hands on the receiver a bit more when he's jamming in press. Um, but you know, he's he does because he just doesn't quite have the reach or the accuracy with his hands at the moment. Um, but he's you know he's got all of the aggression and physical toughness that you'd want. So it does it does tend to suggest it's something that's going to come along with time. Um, the other thing I'd mention with it, so moving on sort of to how he how he deals with receivers and sort of the uh, later on in the route and sort of in, in, from a separation standpoint from staying in phase, you know he's he rarely gives up separation against most types of receiver. You know, the, the beauty with him is that he's able to win. He, he has such great technique, but he has the athleticism to, to back it up. And then the ability, the, 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 the intelligence and the processing, like I mentioned, he's, it's really difficult to find a, um, a real weakness in his game in terms of man coverage. Like I just, I don't see him. Like I see uh, it, it's, you know, you've, you've got to look to really great receivers to be able to, uh, in college, to be able to find a guy who could actually win against him. Um, and then what we're also talking about here is that he, you know, the thing we're not talking about is his, is his ability in zone, which is, which is, you know, he, like I said, his intelligence is off the charts. He reads route combinations. He reads the QB at such a high level. Um, and he's especially good when he's sort of, um, in cover three, cover four, covering vertical routes against real complex route combinations. You know, there were teams that really designed stuff to, to put him in conflict. And he, he can anticipate and read stuff at such a high level that it was even difficult when he was schemed against to actually get open against him. Um, so I'm a huge fan. I think you mentioned the ball skills. Like, they are, the ball skills are fantastic. Um, he, you know... There's a, if he's going to run vertically down the field with the receiver, th there's a chance he's going to, you know, there's a very high chance he's going to run the route for the receiver and, and catch the ball. Um, you know, he's, he's had seven interceptions over his last two years. Um, so, and then this is without even talking about the fact that he's one of the most physical defensive backs in the, in the class. So his fit with the Ravens is spectacular. Also because, and I, maybe I'll let you talk to this a little bit, is, is his versatility, which the Ravens absolutely love in defensive backs. And the thing the thing that I think makes him a, a guy that really would be in consideration for me and, and, all, and very near the top of my list um, at pick 30, although I, I don't think there's a real chance that he's going to make it to 30, is the fact that the two holes that I think the Ravens have are depth at corner um, and, uh, and, and a third safety. 
Um, and if you've got a guy who can provide the depth at corner and potentially play in that sort of third safety role, you've got a guy who's going to get on the field a lot. So he's going to be worth the pick in the end, even early on in his career. Um, and then you've potentially got some flexibility down the line if you can't pay Brandon Stevens, if he plays himself into a large contract, or if Marlon Humphrey, you know, becomes prohibitively expensive in the final years of his deal and he's and the play drops off and they look to get out of it, you've got a ready-made corner to step in and maybe you look for another third safety at some point down the line. So I, I feel like there's so many things that just fit with him with the Ravens that it it would be um it would be a slam dunk for me. Sorry, I've I've gone on yeah. a little bit there. I'm a big no. Team. I mean, it's just it, it, it. There's a lot of reasons why he fits. It, it's yeah. as simple as that. I, and you know, I had a hard time on my board, James, placing pure slot corners because I kind of like Mike Sam is still is one of my favorite players in this draft. But are you really going to take a player in the second round where you already have Millette and you're going to play Kyle in the slot and? you're going to spend a second round pick on somebody who might not see the field half the game. So I, I faded the pure slot corners only. DeGene's different because he plays, he can play safety when you want Kyle in the slot. That's fine. Or if you're having problems at corner, to me, he's, he's your, your prototypical left corner where you, you can play some match zone with them where, you know, even Marlin or Brandon Stevens can press on the other side. You got DeGene off coverage, being able to use his uh, eyes and attack forward. And we've seen, you know, this trend, James, where the extension of the run game, the jet sweeps, the bubble screens, the tunnel screens, all the quick passes into the flat. DeGene's the kind of guy that blows that stuff up in a Kyle Hamilton-like way. Now, Kyle, special upon, special about that. So to even put DeGene in that class is is saying something. But, yeah, he's fast, a track guy, physical, um, six foot, 203, so he's got some got some stockiness to him. I would say if I split with you on any of what you said is his ability to press um, not as high on it. Like you said, he, he kind of misses with his punches sometimes. And I think that his hips are, are tight, but he makes up for it. Like you said, with that instincts and athleticism, like once he gets going, it's quick breaks, but I love the Like I wouldn't even ask him to press unless, you know, you, you know, maybe a handful of times a game. I let him sit off coverage, read his receiver, read the quarterback, read even the receiver next to him to see what kind of route combinations they're doing and let his instincts, ball skills kick in, get a break on the ball. And James also some return skills for Mr. DeGene. When he gets his hands on the ball, it's a, uh, it's fun to watch. It really is fun to watch, isn't it? And I think the, the thing for me, I, I so I would, to, I think we are close actually on, on what we're saying here, because, you know, for me, he's, he's a guy who I wouldn't, um, yeah, I, I also wouldn't ask him to jam. I think that's the thing. I think when he's in soft press, I, I do like the way his footwork matches angles, but it's when you ask him to jam where he's going to get in a little bit of trouble. I think I the difference between us is I'm probably projecting. I am definitely projecting a bit more that I think he probably could do it just because of the aggression and the play strength I see in the run game. Um, it's just maybe that he just needs a bit more time on the technique. But I totally agree with you that the, the best use of him is going to be in in off or bail and just getting him to read the quarterback because it's just going to be it's it's going to be a problem for teams to. Can you imagine stepping back and you've got you've, you've got a, a secondary that potentially you've got. Uh, Brandon Stevens and Cooper DeGene on the outside. Brandon's pressing. DeGene's in off. You've got uh, Marlon Humphrey on one. You know, if you've gone if you've gone three wide with a tight end, you've got Marlon Humphrey um, in the slot. You've got Cal Hamilton in the slot. You've got Marcus Williams and potentially another safety back there as well. It's it's scary for offenses to, to have to go up against that secondary. And then just think also, James. You know, with the attrition in the NFL. If you lose Brandon Stevens or Marlon Humphrey, you got DeGene. If you lose even, I mean, Kyle, you know, don't like to say it, but, you know, Stevens can, I mean, excuse me, DeGene can moonlight in the slot too if you really needed him there, play some strong safety like Kyle did, be a playmaker, a joker, a, a star position, somebody that you just move around and make plays. So love that fit. I'm so glad that you, um, you, you and I are on the same page because when we are on the same page, James, the magic happens, people. So I'm a, I'm gonna give us some credit on that. Me and me and you were having a McDu who like McDuffie more battle on Twitter. Uh, I think he won. I, I mean, I had him pretty darn high, but I think you had him even ridiculously higher than me. Um, you know, I fought a lot of battles on him, James, on this channel. Going to bat for him, he was too slow, too small. All this other stuff I heard from people, and uh, my man McDuffie. But yeah, the team fit for Co Cooper DeGene, physical. 
ball skills like some of the you know if you if you're just out there and uh you know you want to get an idea of them i would suggest just type it in cooper DeGene's highlights and you'll see that some of these interceptions he has and his returns are awesome but some of the interception he has it looks like the ball's intended for him it's the it's the marcus peters type interceptions it's not these deflections or overthrows or anything like that like he is straight up reading the ball finding the ball first kind of bullying his way to the ball and making a play on it and then when he gets the ball in his hands it's 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 track speed so um exciting player i have him at 24 on my board i could easily put him higher uh and then as far as my rankings at corner i have him at cornerback number what is it four cornerback four so i got I got three pure corners ahead of them, I would say, and Dejean the hybrid. And if I'm if I'm being honest with myself, I could see myself moving Dejean up before draft day as I make my final adjustments because uh, I don't know what Vegas says, but he sure looks like a first round player to me. Yeah, I've got, got him. Yeah, I've got him at number three. Um, so I mentioned before, I've tried to uh, really adjust my grading process this year. So I have a um, performance and potential grade for each of these um, players. Uh, to try and uh, to try and recognize the the range of potential outcomes for for a lot of these players um he actually doesn't uh, it's funny he i don't think he has much of a ceiling um because i think he's maximizing his gifts right now so he doesn't actually have a, a much higher potential grade but i've got him graded as a five um quinion mitchell is also graded as a five in my rankings just for just for context but quinion mitchell i do think has a bit more of a ceiling than him which is why i would place mitchell above him and then i'm a huge terry on arnold guy so he's he's above him too um I, i'm not as high on kool-aid mckinstry and nate wiggins as, as some other people i've seen but um obviously we're not going to talk about those guys but yeah that's that's where he is for me and you know he's he is firmly for me the ravens always love to talk about how they want they want a guy for you know if they're picking 30 they want a guy from 13 to 20 on their board um to take him at 30 and and he would be well in that range probably higher than that range for me i think actually um in this draft class excellent so all right we've got some goodwill out the way let's do some battle on a prospect now you mentioned to me i mean he was really mean guys he was really mean he was telling me how low i was on on brandon coleman he actually was not mean he's uh one of the nicest people i know so you can probably tell but uh just trying to lie for the people james uh, there's a guard out there that you seem to be high on so uh his name's brandon coleman out of ccu i'm gonna first give you my knocks because yeah. there are a lot of good things to say about brandon coleman now yeah. i have him in my draftable category so not a guy i would consider a value pick on day three but still a draftable player my problem or my issues with him is this he's he started college in 2018 so he had two years of junior college now he's a, he's a six-year college player um and just to be blunt or like uh uh basic uh with it i would say i'm not in love with his pass pro his leaning him getting beat his recovery uh i think he's an excellent run blocker I think that he'll have problems uh, in the NFL level with some of your better uh, defensive linemen when it comes to pass protection. So that's why I don't have him higher. I've seen Daniel Jeremiah and a lot of the other guys like on combine day, they're saying, all right, this guy's a third round lock. Like to me, I would think he would, you know, I wouldn't be comfortable taking him in a third round come fourth, fifth. That would be more my speed. What am I missing? Why am I, um, uh, away from consensus on this <laughs> no so I, I so you're certainly not wrong you know there are a number of issues um in terms of his pass blocking um you know if you want to if we want to get into it a little bit you know in terms of what what is what he is missing i feel like um I, I, first of all i think a lot of you know he played so he he moved around a lot they asked a lot of him um he played the majority of his snaps in college at left tackle uh, you can see him play left guard both in his senior and sophomore years um i th i thought he was better when he played inside um so that's the much better much yeah. better yeah. yeah so i think that's the first thing to say i completely agree with you about so you know when the guy when he vertical sets which you saw him do a lot outside he just doesn't bend well and you know his hand placement is all over the place um, and it really opens him up to all kinds of counters, especially bull rushes, explosive rushes. You can get to the edge and and corner against him. Um, I think the thing I'd say, I, I, you know, and, and then there's other stuff as well, which I could just go on and on about. Like if, I don't think his feet are as efficient as they could be, especially in vertical sets. Um, it, so there's a few things that I think are 
that, that that maybe they're a bit of a struggle for him. The thing, the thing that first of all, like I said, I love him more inside. Like that is where that is where you want. But what what I think the, the biggest thing I think about him and and so you look at the athletic tools and you look at the testing and you look at he's a he's a strange size like he's a strange shape he has pretty long arms and huge hands um and he's got all the athletic testing so he's got a lot of the tools in his back to 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 do very well but the thing that i love that you pair those tools with and there's loads of technique issues and loads of things that need to be resolved the kid just competes like that's the thing i see and when i see a kid that competes like that like I'm willing to sort of look at some of those technical deficiencies and say, you know what, I think that, like, I think Tyler Smith is a great example of a guy. So I was really high on Tyler Smith a couple of years ago, and I, I saw a lot of people who really weren't, and there were a ton of technique issues. Uh, the thing he wasn't as athletic, but he had the power that that you that you really loved. But he also competed, and this is the thing I think with Coleman that I'm I'm willing to bet on him sort of fixing some of those technical issues, not just because like a competitor sometimes is a, people sort of snark at it because it's a bit of a, you know, it's like a John Harbour choir boy type thing is, you know, he's, oh, he competes, but he's, but he's, you know, he really struggles technically. Like I, I, he's got all the athletic gifts and he competes. And the thing about comp being competitive in uh, offensive line, I feel is that, you know, one of the one of the the high end elite skills for an offensive lineman is their ability to recover. Um, they get into compromising positions all the time. They get stuck with their body in a strange situ strange position. They might get um, you know beaten up to the first punch, and he got beat to the punch plenty of times. Um, but he just every single time you just saw him compete to stay in the rep, and you know, the, the pressure events against his quarterback were few and far between because the kid just competed. Now, that might not translate to the next level. It may be a struggle for him at the next level when he starts to face some of those more um, elite edge rushers. But I just I just feel like because of the athletic, you pair the athletic ability with the, co with the competitor in him and you put him with some NFL coaching, I think there's a chance that you get a guy who... Um, can be a very competent pass protector. The other thing I look for in guards is I think he's got a great anchor, um, so that's that's a that's a nice plus to, for for playing inside. And like you, I do think he's a really good run blocker. So there's, oh, yeah. I just feel there's a lot to like. And I think the thing for me is I, maybe when it's all sell it, said and done, I'll have been over overrating the competitiveness, and he won't make the jump from the because I think I can see the path to the outcome that you've described. Um, I just can also see the path to a, a much um, greater outcome for him. So I think that's where I am on him. No, I, I you know, I, I, if any, if anything, you're, you're, you're more in line with what, because I, I don't like to look at what other people write. I don't like to look at other write-ups until I'm finished. Then when I'm finished and I'm about to put my big board out, I'll be like, man, they really feel like this about this guy. That's when I start doing my positional favorites with the stars to say, look, this guy's, obviously a favorite of mine. I like him more than other people do. But with uh, Coleman, it was the opposite. I, you know, I was like, man, I, we just went through John Simpson. I'm, I'm like, man, this is, this is kind of reminded me of him just a little bit. I mean, he's a butt kicker in the run game. Um, you know, but it's just like, he's, he's behind too much for me to like have. And I think I want you to, I want to ask you about this. Like when it comes to the offensive line in this draft, I think, I don't know. I think there are so many questions with just the players that we have. Ben Cleveland, I feel pretty confident in. Voorhees has never played a snap. Uh, Sala, you know, quite honestly, was uh, the tape wasn't good. Um, and who am, who else am I missing in there? Uh, oh, Falele. I'm I'm kind of I kind of want a guy. Like I want a guy in there if I'm going to do it. I don't want another prospect along the lines, third, fourth, fifth round, where we're asking Jody to to work miracles. So I'm not sure if that's a personal bias of mine, James, where I'm, you know, like when I get to that part of the draft, I'm putting like, you know, cornerbacks higher than the guards or something like that. But uh, I do worry about him. I want to ask you about his run blocking though. I wrote down that he looks, he could, he could probably handle uh, the zone, you know, zone concepts. He's got that kind of like his feet are better in the run game than they are in the pass game, but he looks like a power player to me. Um, moving people and combo blocks, uh, 
you know, getting to the second level, that kind of thing. Do you think he can run block in, in any kind of on any kind of run play? Yeah, he's uh, so my struggle. I think his footwork is better in run blocking, but it's also oftentimes a little chaotic. Um, there's there isn't much measure and control with him when he's when he's looking to position and fit blocks. Um, I think you, what you're like, I, he, he almost has sort of happy feet a little bit, um, and and I, I don't see a purpose and an intent in the way he moves his feet in the run game however um i think on fan blocks drive blocks down blocks those kind of gap blocks when when you're not asking him to change direction too much um he it doesn't really matter he's he's going in one direction he's got plenty of play strength and he's and he's moving his feet on contact so he's he finishes most of those blocks no problem um i don't know that he is explosive has explosive strength you know i don't see him on curl leverage at any point but he's but he's he's got plenty he's plenty strong enough. I think some the the issue in his footwork that I see um, rears its head a bit more on you know when he's when he's asked to reach block when he's asked to turn a more significant corner on pulls or in space when you're kind of maybe asking him to do a little bit more than he can do at the moment. Um, so he's got, that's the area in his run blocking that I think you need to see him work on. And then that becomes an interesting discussion with the Ravens about how much are they going to continue to move towards a zone blocking offense. I wrote in the guide that, you know, Todd Monken seems to have gone with evolution rather than rev, re, revolution um, in terms of the way he's, he's, he's evolving the Ravens scheme. They still were majority gap last year, but we did see more zone runs towards the end of the year, more explosive zone runs, and they just signed Derrick Henry and the two offensive linemen they kept are two offensive linemen that are best were our best zone blockers. So it does tend to suggest they're probably going to continue that trend towards more zone. But I think things like counter are still going to be a, a staple of their offense. So I'm still interested in offensive linemen that can can gap block as well um so I, i'm not really massively discounting those guys and saying they're not they're not um they're not a good scheme fit but i'm also starting to look for more zone blockers too um and i'm not sure i think zone would be a bit of a like he needs he needs a working zone um but again he's he's a project and i think you know you mentioned i, I also wouldn't be he wouldn't be my only offensive line pick you know I, you are gonna have to find they have to find a tackle i, I think you know if ultimately they I think that the starting line right now is Stanley, probably a rookie at guard, uh, Linda Baum, Ben Cleveland, and Pat McCarry, um, I think is the starting offensive line right now. And so realistically there, you probably want to find an upgrade at tackle as much as I love Pat McCarry and the way he um, makes up for his, um, the sort of deficiencies that he has. Um, you're probably looking for an upgrade at tackle that can potentially move out out to, to Ronnie Stanley's position at some point in the future. And as you mentioned, like I think there's a whole lot of what if at guard. Um, even Cleveland for me is a bit of a what if still. I think we've seen some improvement, but we still don't really know. So it, there's, yeah, it feels like that he couldn't be the only pick at offensive line. I, I wouldn't put it past them picking three offensive linemen in this draft, um, frankly. Um, one of them's going to have to start day one, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, the good thing uh, I think I like the Josh Jones pick up too, just because uh, yeah. his versatility there. And there's a cut up on my channel if you'd like to go back a few videos and see Josh Jones play against us on short rest week one for the Texans. Uh, he did all right job, James, for an emergency start. I was kind of impressed with him. Another guy looks a lot better at guard than than tackle. Um, that's kind of the way things work. You know what I mean? I, Tackles are hard to find. There's just not enough of them. So, so yes, uh, Brandon Coleman, interesting guy though, very interesting guy. Uh, I, I, you know, like I said I'm wondering if my bias takes over here. So I'm like, all right, we're only going to have nine or ten spots. Like, are they really going to cut Salah in year two? Uh, I don't know. But Voorhees hasn't stayed healthy. He started going to school the year Marlon was drafted. I mean, Voorhees might have gray in his more gray in his beard than me, bro. Like, I don't even know. Um, so yeah, I'm nervous about the O line, James. I can't help it. It's it's just you know I feel like in the end you protect Lamar, we're gonna be all right. You know what I mean? That's that's where it starts. You start adding weapons and everything. You open them holes for Derrick Henry and protect Lamar, and we're, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be on. We're gonna be good on defense. So James made me proud. Actually mentioned two guys that I had uh, stars on that James also likes. So James. 
what were you proud of me for? Get, pump me up here. What do you, what do you, uh, what'd you see on my board? <laughs> I, so I love your board every time it comes out. I, I like to check it out and see where you are on guys and where I am on, I am on guys. And this year we had quite a bit of, you know, we had some, quite a few differences in some guys across the, across the board, but the guys we really liked, um, there was definitely some crossover and I don't know where you, which, which guy do you want to go to first? It doesn't matter, man. I'm just happy that somebody was looking at the board and agreeing with it. <laughs> well, uh, should we should we stay on the offensive line and go um, and go with Blake Fisher, who um, who I'm a who I'm a big fan of. Um, the thing for me was as I was going through these through, the, through these offensive linemen, I was desperately searching for guys that are not going to be the pick at thirty because I, I do think there's a good chance that the intersection of need and um, and sort of uh, what's the word <laughs> the, sure. the, the tackles are getting taken too early and we're not yeah, going to exactly. get one of them yeah. yeah so i was desperately looking for guys who could potentially do this um uh, out like out, basically play outside but are a little bit further down the board now the ravens might not be into that like the, their jam is long guys who are ridiculously athletic um and so that like it's tough for them to find a starting offensive tackle further further down the draft for for what they want uh there there are actually a couple of guys in this draft that do sort of fit that maybe not the length um although i suppose so patrick paul has ridiculous length but i'm not i'm not a huge um patrick paul guy usually what you get in this draft class i think if you're looking for that that type further down the board you're you're looking at a guy who isn't quite long enough for the ravens but isn't ridiculously athletic like a roger rosengarten or you're looking at a guy like um patrick paul who's really long but not as athletic so you they're, they're gonna have to make a compromise somewhere and so the the real like um disclaimer here is that i'm not sure um the fisher is the ravens type at offensive tackle uh, but i really liked him uh, and I think the thing for me is he's, you know, he's a, he's a really good pass protector. I felt, you know, that there are obviously technical things that you want to work on um, with him uh, that you, you, you want to see, but I thought he had really consistently excellent placement and timing with his hands. I actually thought he kind of knew how to use his length pretty well um, because obviously he, he has got pretty good length. He's 34 and three, eight in charms, I think. Um I thought he played with really good bend as well. Like he 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 had really good leverage um, uh, when he's when he's protecting the quarterback. Um, again, another competitor with really good recovery skills. Um, I think I thought he had a really really good power step. You know, you know if he's facing something with somebody with a with a really good inside move, he's got a he's got a solid post foot and he's going to be able to cut those off. Um, I actually think he's going to be best when he's sort of if if you can get him playing and uh, you know if he can mix up his techniques and and jump set a little bit because he was really good in jump sets where he gets his hands on early. Um, and I think he's got a pretty good anchor too. Um, there are two areas where I feel like he can pr could improve a bit um, in sort of his pass protection. If, if there's a power move into his chest early, you know, like a bull rush or a long arm, um, he can get walked back a little bit. I do, I can see him, re you do see him reset and re-anchor in those situations. Um, so he's still going to compete, but you know, you, I worry a little bit about the translation to the pros on that front. And we might see guys, he's going to see guys that are better and, and are potentially going to, um, you know, uh, get home rather than just get pressure um, when he, when that happens. And um, I also think he's, you know, if, if, you, if he's facing a guy with really good counters and has a really good plan, and um, that's another sort of area where he's going to have to improve and his, his feet aren't the most efficient in the class. Um, but other than that, you know, the, the, these are these are smaller issues that, like, with even than I think Brandon Coleman had really, the, and I like Coleman. So I think there's some, you know, I think he's a really good pass protector, frankly. Um, right. I think he's not great in open space as a run blocker, but I do think he can make run blocks functional. You know, he's not a guy who's going to necessarily dominate in the run game, um, from what I saw. But uh, you know, and I don't think he's got necessarily the ceiling. Of a lot of other prospects, he doesn't have the sort of elite athleticism that the Ravens look for. Um, so there's a few things that sort of maybe might concern me from a Ravens from a Ravens perspective. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of the player, and, and you know you've got to you've got to make a compromise somewhere if you're taking a guy um, like later down in the draft, and, and that's what he would probably be. And so uh, I, I sort of like I would like a bet on him with the the opportunity cost that, that it's going to involve. 
Yeah, he's somebody that when pass protection is your strength as a tackle, sign me up. This is what I'm looking for. Like, I think he would have played left tackle at most other schools. Yeah. I mean, he was, you know, Joe Alts over there at left tackle. He's at right tackle. And the thing that gives me gets me excited about Blake Fisher is that he's a redshirt sophomore. He's 20 years old right now. I guess he's going to be 21 this year, I would guess, but um, haven't looked up his birth date. But a five star recruit. I mean, you talk about his, okay, you could pick on his anchor. I mean, he's going to get stronger. Um, you can pick on his technique. He's going to get better at that. He is a young player. And DaCosta mentioned in his press conference how age is a factor. Uh, they do look at that. I'm less big on it when it comes to, all right, we're drafting a safety in the sixth round. I don't care how old he is. I'm looking to get four years of good play. If he's older, shoot, that might even help us through this first contract that he's, you know, he's, you know, got the grown man strength on him. But Blake Fisher, excellent pass protector, I thought. Um, somebody that I think could could be a left tackle in this league. So when I see him going in like third, fourth rounds in some of these drafts, I just don't see it. I have him higher than than most uh, on my board. His feet are in a good shape right now. I thought he was a quick, choppy stepper. I would like to see him use those quick sets more, jump sets, did you call them? Yeah, uh, dude, the language changes over the years, but it's the same stuff, bro. It's Gosh, it's the same stuff. I have Fisher on my board right now at number 43, so way high up there. Gave him a pure second-round grade. If we end up getting this guy in the second round, I'd be happy with it, especially if we couldn't get a tackle on, on day one. James, where do you think he would fit? Where would you be happy taking him? Am I crazy for having him 43 overall? Now, of course, I don't have quarterbacks on my board, so you're looking at a guy that would be around pick 50. Uh, I've rated him about the 50th, 50th best prospect in this draft. I don't think it's crazy because, like you said, I think he can play left tackle. I don't have the board stacked, unfortunately, uh, vertically, that um, so I can't necessarily compare. But I wouldn't be... I would be mad at him in the second. I probably prefer him in the third, but I mean, you're getting greedy. Probably, I'm not sure you you necessarily get him in the third, as you mentioned. I, maybe the athletic ability sort of drops him a bit, and he, he ends up being a third round pick, or, or maybe even later. But I'd be surprised, like you say. I think he's a, he, I think he's a ch he has a chance to play left tackle in the league. So you 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 feel like there's a um, yeah, there's something there for me. So he's actually I have him. He's one of these ones where I talked about performance and potential earlier. So he's actually at number six on my tackle board. So oh, I actually well. have him above Tyler Guyton. Um, however, Guyton has a significantly higher potential score. So if you're looking to kind of swing for the fences a bit more, Guyton would be the guy I would I would pick. And I think that would like the difference in the performance is so minimal that I probably would I would take Guyton above him. I think um, I'm just the board are just sticking to that with fidelity. So I would probably take Guyton okay. above Fisher. So, so, I, so you're thinking maybe. you're saying with the board is like just by your grading, you would grade him higher than Guyton. But if you were organizing and making a tackle list, you'd probably switch him. So that yeah, who he is now, I think he's I think he has like who he is now in college. I think he is he is a marginally better player than Guyton right now. Um, I think Guyton has a lot of work to do. I, I really like Guyton. I think he's he's a high ceiling prospect, and I, I think there's a good chance he makes that ceiling. So I'm not. Um, this is not a knock on Guyton at all. And like I said, I would probably take Guyton above him. Um, and I'm I wouldn't be really mad if Guyton was the was the thirtieth pick um, in two weeks' time, um, because I do think there's a real chance that he plays left tackle in the league. Fisher, though, is, I think, significant. I, I'm not as high on some of these um, more developmental guys in this draft. So, um, okay, we're not going to necessarily get to this, but Amagadji, Suamataya, Patrick Paul, those guys, I'm higher on Fisher than those guys. Um, and I, even, with their, even with their ceiling, I'm not sure I would necessarily select them above um, – above Fisher but that's the thing with with tackles you've got to con I think you have to consider the ceiling a bit more with tackles which is why I would sort of advocate Guyton a little bit above him um but the fact that he's in the conversation with Guyton um tells you how much I think of him and and I wouldn't be I wouldn't argue with your um assertion of taking him in the second yeah this is where my Ravens board where me comes in to play because I actually have 11 tackles with a second round grade or higher. Now it's easier for tackles to get a higher grade because they play that position, but it's just a ridiculously deep draft. I mean, usually I'm lucky to get five, six. I am sure you've had most of the same experiences tackles that you think have a chance to be a good starter in this league, not just a passable 
emergency starter, but guys that could hold up for 16 games and give you a good level of play. This draft is is heavy with them. So, yeah, Fisher, tackle number 11 uh, on my list, but somebody that I'd be happy to take in the second round. So that's that's kind of rare. Now, James, there's this cornerback um, in that I want to talk to you about that I've been in love with. It's our guy, Yuri. It's Yuri's guy, too. So that scares me that I agree with Yuri. Um, but, you know, he stands out to me. He stood out to you. Um, and he was cornerback, like, number 13, 14, something like that, that I watched. And the first thing I said was jumping off the screen compared to some of the quarterbacks, cornerbacks I watched ahead of him, and that's Max Melton out of Rutgers. Bro, I went through all these four or five corners, you know, not knowing what their speed was at the time, but man, this guy's big, but he's slow. Man, this guy looks quick, but he's just a slot. And then I get to Max Melton, and I'm, I'm wondering why he was 13th on the list that uh, that I got. Absolutely love him. Talk to me about Max Melton, the cornerback. Uh, and first, James, second round. Is this where we're looking at a guy like this? Hundred. Now he is definitely a second round guy for me. Like, uh, you know, I think he's going to go earlier than that. You know, uh, maybe there's a. Um... He's not a first round first round guy, but I, I on yeah you know, I, I get in trouble because I I got a I got a big um, ooh from Ken when we were doing wide receivers and I started making bold predictions about um, where I would take uh, wide receivers um, in this class particularly. No judgment here. No judgment here. <laughs> and by the way, Ken Ken said he's going to take Peyton Wilson in the first round. No, no, and, uh, okay. Now no look now listen to this so. I've decided to get Ken because he likes to woo me too. Plus 800. 20 other players with better odds to make the first round. Underdogs. 20 <laughs> other better underdogs to make the first round of Peyton Wilson. So our uh, linebacker show that just came out gave our good buddy Ken a taste of his own woo medicine there. Love me some Ken. So <laughs> nice. I, I, I mean, it. I've worked with Ken so much, I feel like I can give it back to him a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Go ahead. This is a woo-free zone. Get, give it go yeah. ahead. Well, you know, I, on talent alone, he was my fourth corner, um, which is which is high praise. You know, I, 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 and there's a there's a discussion to be had here about him. I think, but you know, for, I said mentioned before, McKinstry and Wiggins, I'm not as high on as as other people. So he's above both of those guys in my in my rankings, and most people would take either would take both of those guys in the first round. So you know, there's there's a question. You know, that it happens sometimes, and and there. But there's a question about his weight um, and his and his play strength. Um, but Emmanuel Forbes went in the first round, and he was even more rail thin than than Melton. And I don't think Melton plays at like his weight. Um, I think he plays with ridiculous play strength. Frankly, the the first thing we have to talk about, which is the thing I mentioned when I tweeted about him, because um, I, I I he would be the guy. So. Raven Scouts get one red star to put on a player, and the red stars haven't always had a great history <laughs> throughout throughout Ravens draft draft history. But the the Scouts get a chance to put a red star on a player that they think plays like a Raven and is really good. But they only get one; they have to put it on one guy. Max Melton would be my guy. I would put a red star on if I was in the Ravens war room. Um, he's it's like I, a Raven. I mean, it's just the def, def, definition of playing like a Raven. And you only need to show one play to show it, which is against Ohio State. And he had a great game against Marvin Harrison Jr., by the way. Against Ohio State, he's in phase with Marvin Harrison Jr. right down the side. Like, he's right up against the sideline, up against the coaches um, on the right-hand sideline as Ohio State are, uh, attacking. Um, the play goes all the way down the left-hand sideline and right against the sideline against the coaches. He runs with Harrison Jr. downfield for about 40 yards, sees the play has, is happening on the other side of the field, sprints the entire width of the field diagonally as well because it, it, it was almost ahead of him when he starts his sprint across the field um, and makes a touchdown-saving tackle on the other side of the field. It, it, it's... Go and watch the play if you've it's on my Twitter. It's just it's 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 competitiveness personified. And you see it across his game in everything he does. Um he's you know, he, the grit and the toughness um just ooze out of it. He's he's so aggressive in run support, he just inserts himself where he isn't wanted. Um, you know, he'll even like take that. on yeah, he, he'll even take on blocks from fullbacks, tight ends. You know, he's he's just highly competitive, and you can see he takes pride in his run defense. Um, 
there's a there's a small deficiency i think in his open field tackling sometimes when he doesn't really come from high to low that well he's he ne- sometimes takes a little bit of a bad angle um yeah, uh, he can be a fly by guy i think and get a yeah. little little too aggressive he's I mean, he's hair on fire player so yeah exactly he, but he does seem conscious of leverage angles funneling the action back towards the middle but yeah he comes in a little hot sometimes as they I say. completely agree yeah uh, and you know if we're going to talk about his coverage you know so he's so uh, there's a he, his footwork in press without a jam is elite you know he, he is able to disrupt you know there are different ways in which you can disrupt at the line of scrimmage one of the ways is through leverage and through matching angles with your with your footwork against the, the most elite competition in college you know you, you you can see him go up against marvin harrison jr many times um and you can see him re- compete in the release portion of the route um and, and that's because of his outstanding foot speed his hip mobility and um, everything he does on the field is explosive um and that reactive athleticism is is really good i do think he lacks a bit of play strength it does show up on film um, so when he does try to jam, he can whiff a, probably through lack of technique um, and and the bit of that play strength. And I think that the lack of technique, you know, play strength is technique plus core strength, uh, as you know. And like, so it, it's he's missing a bit of technique. So I actually think that can improve slightly if he improves his technique. But there is still the the sort of um, strength deficiency there that 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 will that will probably that does probably show up a little bit there. But on most stuff, on most routes, he's he's going to be in phase because he's an excellent processor, but he has brilliant transition mechanics. He's explosive, as I mentioned, so he's able to react to all different types of breaks um, and pretty much run the route for the receiver. Um, yeah. I think he's got good awareness and zone and, and route progressions and perfect wide receivers. Um, and, you know, he has he has really good ball skills. You know, the, the leaps he can make, to sort of high point the ball and pick it off you know he only has five interceptions over his last two years but um you know i, f- I feel like he probably could have had more if there was more balls thrown his way um so i think there's there's there is a um like a a couple of like little fit deficiencies in his in his um in his game in his ball skills but I, I think that's really good too so I, i'm a huge huge fan and again another guy who was five star across the board for me in terms of what the ravens look for and like i said i would put a red star on him yeah, well, the Red Star is high, high praise. Like you said, one player from the entire draft. This is your guy, James. And, you know, he's my guy, too. I I, I just feel like if he was – if he were if he were two inches taller with the same body mass, he'd be up there with Quinion Mitchell. That's the first corner off the board type thing. And when my only knock on somebody is I wish they were a couple inches taller, you know, with, of course, would come 10, 15 pounds if you were a couple inches taller. That's to me, that's where I got to look at myself and, and check myself and say, look, he's quick. He's fast. He's instinctive. He's got ball skills, plays like his hair is on fire. Uh, you know, you're naming all the important stuff. Uh, you There will be receivers who are just as tall as him that you're going to need. Some of the faster, quicker route running guys that you're going to need to match up one. Where even a guy like Marlon or Brandon Stevens, you'd be like, man, they're – their change of directions. This route runner is going to give him problems. I wish we had a corner that could really stick with this route runner. That would be Max Melton. That would be Max Melton. You get yourself a Max Melton, and wherever that receiver lines up, you put that guy across from him, and it's going to be a long day for that guy. And that's what I love about Max Melton. Also, the versatility we talked about at the top with DeGene, uh, inside, outside, left, right, it really don't matter. He's got long arms, by the way. Offensive lineman, like 32 and an eighth inch arms, which is pretty ridiculous. So I think his press coverage will be good, but press coverage, off coverage, slot, inside, outside. Heck, the kid could probably play safety if you asked him to on the back end. I mean, he's just a pure football player. Uh, his senior bowl was excellent. This is something I want to talk about, James. Back me up on this, bro. Those drills are made for the wide receivers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wide receivers welcome to go wherever the heck he wants, and the corner is out there just trying to survive. Max Melton was far and away, uh, if not the best and second best. He was up there at the top of the cornerbacks who were just naturally reactive, naturally just sticky, bro. Like just, yeah. just like the, you know, the wide receiver can do whatever he wants with no down and distance, no 
okay, we, we know he needs to get eight yards, so I'm going to play. Th- there's none of that. Like, it's wide open for the wide receivers. And Max Melton was in everybody's back pocket the whole week. And and you you mentioned it exactly why he was in everybody's back pocket. It's that reactive athleticism, that explosion. Like, he he doesn't need – yeah, he doesn't need the the tools that – the defensive the, some defensive backs who are a bit more deficient in that need to be able to stay in phase on those type of routes like he's just he's just naturally gifted as a as a cover corner i just I, and i you know so he is going to be able to run in those situations and 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 stay in phase and it's like you mentioned i think you mentioned like the you can get carried away with the with the weight and wanting him to be a little bit bigger but the the length as you mentioned and like i said the 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 technique is not quite there yet when he jams so if if his technique improves his strength improves because his play strength improves so i think there's you know if if i was looking at him and saying you know what actually his technique's really good but he's still struggling then maybe it's core strength and he's gonna have to get in the weight room and i think that's more of a projection to right to, it's to like that. if you don't and hit somebody square with your punch yeah. And you didn't get you didn't hit him hard. That's why. But yeah. like if you're hitting somebody hard with your punch and he's still not going down, then you need to get in the weight room. But Max is Max is like timing of his punches or yeah. could get a little better. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um and so if that's the case, then you can you can project a bit of improvement there. And like you mentioned, the length will help him there as well once he learns how to use it a bit more effectively. So there's there's stuff that you can you can project there I think a bit more confidently in terms of his in terms of his work at, at the at the release point so I, I just feel there's so so much to like about him and like you mentioned there's a there's like a I, I'm I do have some guys that I'm a little bit higher on in that second tier than others like I do like Kamari Lasseter and a few others but you know it, as I agree with you I, I was in the same boat where I was just sort of drudging through some of these these corners and 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 sort of did find some things to like in some of them but the minute you put melton's tape on you sort of go wow i like i like you said i, d- I don't know why i was doing him so late it was it was uh, yeah. it was crazy i think it's scouts bias honestly where they look at his size and they they think all right this is a slot corner so let's put the outside corners first and then put melton but yeah i just can't help but to uh, think there's going to be a receiver on the other team that we face it would be like, all right, you're going to want a guy like Max Melton, some feisty, sticky, change of direction quick. Oh, yeah, he runs a 4-3-9, too, if you got real big speed. Um, just some, you know, a guy that you could really help take. And ball skills, they say, we'd just say five interceptions he had. They they weren't really – there wasn't opportunities for the guys that he was covering to get the football. Like, he's all over these guys. So, um, so James, before we wrap it up, you're coming to are you coming to baltimore are you coming across the uh across the pond what's going on here bro? yeah i'm going across the pond literally tomorrow so uh, we're recording monday night i'm flying tomorrow on tuesday um we do come to the states a lot me and my uh my wife and and now my little family because i have a little 10 month old daughter um so we do come across the states a lot because i come to baltimore and watch a lot of ravens games and we've been sort of traveling across most of the states um at times over over the years and i've watched a lot of football in the states I came and did a bunch of college football a few years ago but why um, would you bro just move just come on in here <laughs> you know what I mean? just bring mom and dad or brothers <laughs> sisters i don't know what kind of family you got just bring them all on uh and, and just just stay over here man has he been to baltimore i mean don't let this man's accent fool you. He's he's been here. He actually said he's going to an O's game on Wednesday. Is that correct? Game on Wednesday, yeah. I'm going to the O's game what on Wednesday. You know about baseball, bro. You know anything about baseball? I do know about baseball. I've been a baseball yeah. fan for a while. I'm nowhere near as kind of uh, in depth into the game as much, but I do I do really love it. It's a it's a nerd's game, and I'm a bit of a nerd, so uh, so that that kind of helps. But yeah, I, I, I'm a big baseball fan, and I'm a big. I think you over here in the uk like baseball's certainly nowhere near as big as as football um but there are there are little pockets of fandom of baseball but it's very small it feels like sort of football was sort of 15, 10 15 years ago i think it's hard to watch a baseball game on tv and get into it when you when you never experienced a baseball game in the states like if you if you go and experience a baseball game you're like oh oh i get this um right. like over here we love, we love cricket and that goes over five days sometimes so you know it's it's you know it's fine that it's uh it's a few hours and so the experience of the ballpark is great um so yeah i'm um yeah i'm coming over to see an o's game it'll be well we're, we're coming over for a different reason but i will go and see an o's game while we're here yeah, while we're dude, see, i have my theory on baseball is if you played it and you understand the pitch to pitch 
you know, shoot, I can't catch up to this fastball, so I got to dial it up a little bit. And then all of a sudden the breaking ball comes and you froze. Like the, like it, I think for people that didn't play, the ball has to be in play for them to be interested. And like to me, it's just like, what does the pitcher have? What can he locate? What pitches are working? How hot is this hitter? All like the little things is what makes it what makes it interesting. But you know, it's not for everybody. It's not a it's a it's a it's a nice chill sport for for real. And it'd be boring, 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 boring. And then at the end, it's intense. See, so there you go, Mister James Ogden. Work below. Check out his guide. And, and check out some of the guys that we differ on because you'll have – I am sure. I mean, shoot, James and I are watching 100 – I watched about 250 this year, James. Just went nuts with it. And uh, James does all these thorough reports. I have to get with you and I have to get your confidence to, like, put my notes out there, bro. Because I got notes on all of them, but I'm like – I don't know. I'm kind of, like, uh, nervous to put out my notes and have that, like, Tom Brady, uh, too unathletic. Plus, my notes are, like, for me. Like, I can get brutal with it. Stay stuff that I wouldn't say on here and, like, just down a player. Be like, he's not athletic enough to play. And then, you know, three all pros later, then my <laughs> notes are out there. And I said he wasn't a good an NFL athlete. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll get with you offline. You can give me the courage to put out my notes next year. So, it's not just a bunch of names for people. But, uh, James, thank you so much, bro. It's just great to catch up. Um, be safe coming in. Uh, I hope you enjoy Camden Yards. It's it should be and hopefully it's a nice day on Wednesday. And um, you know, it, I'm really proud of the work that you put out. Really happy you're part of football family. Um, just love you to death, man. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Thanks, man. Thanks, Jason. It's such a pleasure. And um, yeah, anyone who knows you knows the the amount of work that you put into these guys too. So um, yeah, it's always respect um, like the opinions from you. And and uh, yeah, it's great great to talk football. So thanks. Well, man. it's 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 hard to find people that are into the draft like that. So like, it's a it's a real kinship, a brotherhood among among us, among among a lot of us. Um, like when I had Chris on here, man, I, I swear I could add you and Chris, and we could. I mean, dude, if we spent a four hour night drinking some drinks or something. It just wouldn't be enough. We'd be, yeah. we'd, we'd still have more to talk about from all these hours of stuff. So, um, yeah, man, I've, I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's always generosity and good vibes when we get together, man. I, I, so I, I love you for that. So, um, with that, I want to say thank you to my football family. Love my football family. Uh, James links are below link to the big board. Of course, will be in this as well. See if I move Brandon Coleman up a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. I might try to dig some more tape here and, and, and get a little more comfortable with his past, bro. But uh, with that, I want to thank you to everybody. James, please, please say goodbye to the people for me. Yeah, goodbye, everyone. Thanks, thanks for having me on.